Well, grace and peace, and thank you for joining us here at the Friendship Baptist Church of Delaware. We hope and pray that your day has been great and your week has been wonderful. We are honored and blessed that you have considered to see us and view us tonight for our Wednesday night Bible class. We hope and pray that uh, this broadcast will bring healing, bring deliverance, catapult you to another place in the name of the Lord. Let us pray tonight. Father, we thank you. We give your name praise. Father, you said in everything to give thanks for this is the will of God. And Father, we give you thanks. We thank you because you did not allow our sins of yesterday to dictate our today. And we are grateful and we're thankful. Now, Father, as we study your word, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we say, amen. Well, let's grab our Bibles and get right to the word. Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2. Uh, verses 1 through 5, and it says, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, and so much that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was a four. And when they could not come nigh unto the, him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and there laid, or rather they had broken it up. They let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. And Jesus saw their faith. And he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins, plural, be forgiven thee. The word of the Lord for the people of God. I want to talk and uh, title our lesson tonight uh, from this very familiar passage of scripture, holding up your end of the bargain. Um, brothers and sisters, we must understand um, as we look here into the ministry, this mark uh, deals with this is called focusing on the ministry of forgiveness. Mark, as we have learned, is the master of time gaps. Rather than getting boggled down in the details of Jesus' restriction ministry in the wilderness, he skips forward to re-enter into Capernaum. Jesus left in triumph. He returns under he returns under scrutiny. Eventually, the word of the clean leopard who disobeyed orders perceived Jesus in Capernaum. When he heals the leopard, he hopes that he can still serve the needs of man and stay within the system. That hope was vantage all around him um, are critical eyes squandering to find fault with every action in skeptical tongues, waggering at the impulsive of every utterance. Jesus has no choice but to comfort or rather to confront the system and challenge its dead uh, uh, theology. Uh, the, the, the situation opens up a new factor of his personality. While still responding tenderly to the people in need, Jesus reveals his ability to take uh, the narrative, the, 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 the scrutiny, or the scrutiny, and exercise his faith. He exercises who he is and leaves um, the, the option feeling as if they had entered a battle of with unarmed. In the contrast over Jesus' authority for gifts, sin, Mark gives us an untering insight unto the mind of Jesus. The meaning of mind is like a diamond with the factors as you turn it over in the light. One factor is to interpret the word to mean frame of mind or to use a popular word mindset. Each of us has a certain mindset 
uh, built out of our beliefs, our values, and our experience. Uh, let me say that again. Each of us have a certain mindset that is built out of our beliefs and values of our experience. What is the mindset of Jesus? Another factor of meaning of the word mind is to incline or leaning of the mind or learning of the mind. There is a difference between the frame of mind and the learning of the mind. The frame of mind tends to be the statistic and thus reactive to the new idea and experience it. Learning, leaning of the mind or learning of the mind or dynamic and proactive, neither fixed or faculty, but clearly moving in a given direction. Mark accounts of the healing of this uh, paralyzed man illustrates the mindset of Jesus at work. While he is preaching in a crowded house in Capernaum, Jesus is startled by the debris falling on the head as a hole is being opened in the ceiling. Certainly, he's preaching. His preaching is interrupted by the sight of a stretcher being lowered through the hole by four pair of willing hands and guiding by four pair of eyes. In response, Jesus speaks to the helpless creation. Son, your sins are forgiven. Hmm. Here we find here, we find here in, in chapter 2 of Mark, we find Jesus is returning back to Capernaum after some days. Capernaum, as we have studied it, uh, was a fishing village inhabited from the mid 2nd century BC to 11th century AD. It is located on the northwestern shore of the Sea of Galilee and had the population of about 1,500 people. Our lesson tonight deals with a man that was paralyzed so severe which caused him to be lying in a bed which means he was a quadriplegian. Jesus now returns to Capernaum after, Capernaum after some days and the people got word that in verse number one it says and he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise. It was the word was out that Jesus was back in town. And they came and filled the house to hear the word of God. He was not telling them they're going to get a house. He was not telling them they're going to get a car. But he was teaching the word of God. And because they wanted to hear the word of the Lord, they filled the house until there was nothing left, no room left in the house. When they, when, when they bring in, or while bringing this man to the house, they could not get into the door because there was no more room. That you got to understand that this man was a quadriplegian, but he had some friends that was sick as well. But they said, listen, if we get you to Jesus, we too can be healed. First point tonight, what kind of, I want to ask you, what kind of friends do you have? That, 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 that are willing to, to hold up their end of the bargain and say, listen, I know you sick, but if I get you to the person that can heal, if I can get you to the person that can deliver, I too can be healed. I too can be delivered. That we have to be careful in this season that we do not have people that can't keep their word. They say, I'm with you today. And by the night, they say, I can't be with you. That we have to make sure 
that here it is that they 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 got to the place and they said Jesus we we know that we can get we get him to Jesus we can be healed but when they got to the house the bible says that they could not get in because there was no more room left they did, here it is they could have got they could have got distracted they could have got discouraged but they didn't you got to understand something even though when you know where you're trying to get to, you got to understand something that no matter when you, no matter where you're trying to get to, obstacles will always be in your way. But the first thing we see tonight in this lesson tonight is he had some friends that was not scared. They, he had some friends that was determined. And you got to understand something. You got to have some people in your life that are more determined than you are. Because the Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? That's, we hear that in, when people get married. It is not just about marriage. It's about where you're going in your life. Two sickies can't, be, can't get somebody well. You need somebody with you that is holistic in their mind, holistic in who they are, that when you're down and out, they can help you. But they get to the door. They feel it. They, 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 they have now came up with a plan. They say, well, listen, we, I'm going to hold. I got my side. You got your side. And we're going to do this thing together. No doubt it does not say that they got weak on the way, but no doubt they probably got weak on the way. But they kept moving. And the Bible says, uh, let me paraphrase, they, they probably was feeling well. They was, they, was, they was feeling like everything was getting ready to change. And boom, they get to the door and they can't get in. Have you ever got to a place you felt good, you got dressed, you put your good rags on and you got dressed and you, you, you smelled, you put your best cologne and perfume on and you get to the place and they say, we can't let you in. Man, you're walking away discouraged, you're walking away defeated. But no, they said, no, nah, we can't get in the front, we can't get to the side, we can't come to the back. But, but I know he's teaching, but there's a roof. And you got to understand something tonight. You got to be more determined to say, I'm, I, I'm not leaving here until I get delivered. I'm not leaving here until I get what I need. And the Bible says that they now come up with this courageous thought to take the roof off. Now we must understand that this is not the roof of brick and mortar. But they was in the hut. And the Bible says that they, they ripped the roof off. Now it took some kind of strength. Climbing up to the roof. It wasn't easy. But they didn't abandon their friend. It got hard, but they did not abandon their friend. They did not abandon, they did not jump ship, but instead it got hard, it got, it may got frustrated, they might have gotten, uh, arm might have got tired, but they kept working. I want to tell you tonight, keep, hold up your end of the bar. I don't care how weak your arms may get. I don't care how frustrated it might get. But you got to keep holding on. You got to keep going with the assignment that God has given to you. But the Bible says that they, now, they bring this man to the house. They could not get him because there was no room. Um, but, but the man, they tried every area of the house only to realize the only way to get in was the roof. They were desperate 
for their friend to be healed. No doubt in their mind, they probably said, listen, I can't, I don't like seeing my friend like this. I don't, I don't want to see my brother down like this. I got to get you some help. I can't do it, but I'm going to take you to somebody. In other words, they, not, they didn't abandon. They did not abandon him, but they stayed there until... He was healed. They tried every way to get him. They took the roof off and loaded the man. Understand that this wasn't their house. The house where Jesus was, it belonged to Peter. So you mean to tell me they went to somebody else's house, tore it up to get their healing? Absolutely. Because no matter what comes in your life, no matter what comes in your way, I want to tell you something tonight that you have to still hold up your end of the bargain. Because here it is, we have a lot of people that will say, oh, I'm with you. I believe in you. I got you. No, but you got to understand something that even though I might be going through, I might be down. That I got some people that, that's not going to allow me to be down. That they're going to get me back up. They're going to hold on to the end of the bargain. But you got to mu must understand of something tonight. That if you're ever going to get what you need from God, you will need some people that's going to help you get what you need. Now tonight we must understand in order for us to hold up our end of the bargain. You saying tonight, well, what, what, what does that mean? Holding up your end of the bargain means to do as was promised in an agreement or bargain, to carry through with what one agreed to. What does it mean to hold up the, my end of the bargain? It means to fulfill one's promise and obligation or obligation. How do I honor a promise? To do what one has agreed to do. How do I keep up? How do I do my part of the bargain? If you keep your side of the bargain, you do what you have promised or arranged to do. That I heard a saying that if everyone does little, no one has to do much. That for so long we have carried everything by ourselves, but allow someone to hold up the end of the bond. That if I hold up what I my promise, if I hold up what I agreed to, if I hold up to what I'm responsible for, even though my, my, my partner might get tired, that if I hold up my end, we, uh, we might we might go down a little, but we won't go down much. But I pray tonight that even as you hold up your end of the barn, that when your arms get tired, your feet get tired, that you pray to the Lord, that Father help us tonight to hold up my end of the bargain. 
Father, we thank you. We give your name praise tonight. We give your name glory. We thank you for this time of word. We thank you for this time of worship. Now, Father, bless us. Keep us as only you can. In Jesus' name we say amen. Listen, join us this Sunday morning. This Sunday morning, 10 a.m. is our in-person worship. 10 a.m. We're asking you that would like to come meet us at 530 East 4th Street, Wilmington, Delaware. 10 a.m. Uh, we ask you to please wear your mask. We want to follow all of the CDC guidelines. Join us in worship. We look to see you. Go in peace. God bless you. We'll see you in church.